Welcome back to Late Agenda. Throughout the Commonwealth Leaders meeting in Sri Lanka, Tony Abbott had to bat away questions about going soft on Sri Lanka's position on possible war crimes and abuses of human rights during its long and bloody civil war. Tony Abbott said he wasn't going to lecture Sri Lanka, that much progress has been made there. But Conservative British PM David Cameron took the diametrically opposite stance. He made a big play of embarrassing and angering the Chogham host, Sri Lankan President Rajapaksa, by publicly campaigning against Sri Lanka's human rights record, demanding an international war crimes inquiry and snubbing parts of the leaders' meeting to visit previously war-ravaged parts of the north of the country. On his return, Tony Abbott also had to defend some comments about torture. And there's been more damage done to the relationship with Indonesia as allegations of Australia spying on the mobile phone of Indonesia's president, his wife and nine ministers surfaced today. And the Indonesian ambassador to Australia has now been recalled to Jakarta, as we understand. And there's still the issue of the government wanting to raise the debt ceiling. I'm joined now by Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, Alan Tudge. He's in our Canberra studio. Alan Tudge, welcome to Late Agenda. G'day Helen, great to be with you. Now at Chogham, the Prime Minister very firmly seemed to put asylum seeker boats as the focal point for his visit. Is that the most pressing issue that's facing Australia with regard to our region? Well there are a number of issues which were discussed at Chogham. There was poverty issues, there was trade issues, as well as of course people smuggling issues too. People smuggling of course is a very important issue for Australia and it is for Sri Lanka as well. So of course that was an important topic discussed at the meeting. What is the agreement though we gave two patrol boats to Sri Lanka to help in the fight against people smugglers? What's the agreement that's been done with providing those patrol boats? Are we happy for the Sri Lankan Navy to use them in any way to stop asylum seeker boats? Well there's an agreement where the Prime Minister on behalf of the Australian Government gave two uh, patrol boats to the Sri Lankan Government to use with their border protection in Sri Lanka and to help to stop the people smuggling trade from Sri Lanka. Now it's very important we have a good relationship with Sri Lanka because you know this year there's only been I think 12 boats come directly from Sri Lanka to Australia whereas last year there was about 140 boats. So if we work well together then we can really make a difference in terms of stopping the flow of boats from Sri Lanka. And these two boats will help and work alongside the, um, the Navy, the, Internet, the Sri Lankan Navy, to help stop the people smuggling business at its source there in Sri Lanka. But, I mean, are we happy then if, say, the Sri Lankan Navy judged that, you know, they might not rescue people from a wrecked boat, they might have to uh, steam away from a people uh, smuggling boat? Are we happy with whatever they choose to do with our boats? Well, we have provided them the boats and we have also given, um, providing some training to the Sri Lankans as well. And in addition to that, there will be a memorandum of, memorandum of understanding between Australia and Sri Lanka as to the operation of that boat. And my understanding is that is still being worked through. OK, on the issue of human rights there and abuses by Sri Lanka in that 26-year war that they had, the civil war, do you think, you mentioned that only 12 boats have come from Sri Lanka in the past year. So is it... This year. All, mm. This year. Is it all right to put Australia's self-interest, which is only uh, trying to stop the trade of perhaps 12 boats or more, before a moral stance on the human rights, rights abuses there? I don't think that's the correct characterisation, Helen. I mean, all of us have an interest in stopping the people smuggling business. It is an evil trade. And we've had almost a thousand people drown at sea um, from, as a direct result of the people smuggling business being back in business after la the Labor Party dismantled um, the Pacific solution. We all have an interest in stopping that people smuggling business, including the Sri Lankans. Now, in relation to human rights, um, we have taken, the Prime Minister took the approach to engage with Sri Lanka, not to lecture it. The Foreign Minister has had very constructive discussions with her counterparts. The Prime Minister has had constructive discussions with his counterparts. But our interest is to ensure that we engage with Sri Lanka as much as possible and ensure that they can be on the 
um, constructive pathway to being a terrific international citizen going forward. All right, so that is a more important, a more sensible way for Australia to go than to take the British Prime Minister David Cameron's approach and say, oh, you know, morally, Sri Lanka's in the wrong on human rights. Listen, Sri Lanka has just only four years ago came out of a very bloody 30-year civil war. But thankfully that is over now. And I think that the Sri Lankan government is now on a pathway towards rebuilding the country, to democratising the country and to seeing the country being a great international citizen. And all of us have an interest in seeing Sri Lanka um, head in that direction and working with it in that direction. And the British Prime Minister, um, the position that he took is, is up to him and the British government. Um, the position we took is obviously um, up to us and what is in our interests um, from Australia as well. All right. Well, Tony Abbott made some comments. He was asked about torture at Chogham. Let's have a listen to what he said there. And then he was asked about it in Question Time today. Obviously, the Australian government uh, deplores um, any use of torture, uh, we deplore that. Uh, wherever it might take place, uh, we deplore that. Um, but we accept uh, that sometimes in difficult circumstances, uh, difficult things happen. Prime Minister, what are the difficult things and what are the difficult circumstances? The Australian government deplores the use of torture, always has and always will. <laughs> Alan Tudge, the Prime Minister didn't answer in question time the question the same way that he had the other day. So what are the difficult circumstances that the Abbott government would accept that difficult things, like torture presumably, are done? Um, I think the Prime Minister was crystal clear in the House of Representatives yesterday when so he said that he torture is unacceptable under any circumstances. He did I think say, Chogham, very... difficult circumstances Helen, think... require difficult things to be done. I think he said it very, very clearly yesterday in the House of Representatives that torture is unacceptable under any circumstance. So he clarified uh, an earlier statement that he'd made on torture? He could not be clearer than yesterday in the House of Representatives. I think it was actually today, because today is Monday, yesterday was Sunday. But anyway, so you uh, are saying... I apologise. That there, that's no, been no, a long day, fine. Helen. But you are saying... I mean, he clearly clarified what he'd said at Chogham. The Prime Minister could not be clearer than what he said today, and I don't have anything further to add on that. All right. Well, now, on the spying issue, it, it is very embarrassing, isn't it, that we are seen to be helping the US spy on senior leaders, their private mobile phones, of our close friends and neighbours. Are you concerned about this? Is the government concerned? Because Tony Abbott didn't seem to want to make an apology today to Indonesia, and now Indonesia is very angry about this. Indonesia is one of our absolute most important relationships right on our doorstep. We have a great interest in, in developing further that relationship. Um, but in relation to intelligence matters, every country in the world, as the Prime Minister has said today and, and at other times, engages in the collection of information. Um, but we do not, um, we never do, no party ever does, um, comment, in, comment on specific intelligence matters. That's been a, a convention for a very long time, Helen, and I'm not prepared to break it here tonight. All right, but are you upset that the Indonesian ambassador has been recalled to Indonesia, as we understand? <sighs> We, we, we have a great interest in developing a constructive, respectful, cooperative relationship with Indonesia. That is our great interest um, and we will be doing whatever we can to further um, the development of that relationship and the Prime Minister going to Indonesia is his first point of call having um, been elected um, to government was a good indication of how important we see that relationship. We will continue to build upon it um, through people-to-people -people links, through trade links, through other mechanisms because they are our largest, nearest neighbour and incredibly important to us. Alan Tudge, just very briefly on the debt ceiling debate, when you were in opposition there was much talk about the debt emergency. Has it gone away because you are now wanting to increase our debt? 
We want to increase the debt ceiling because Labor's legacy has meant that the debt under them and going forward is going to peak at $370 billion. That's their figures projected into the forward estimates. What, in, at, now, at 2016 17? We, we are, we are, what we are suggesting, Helen, is that, well, first of all, I should say the debt ceiling is going to be broken on the 12th of June. Um, we're going to go through $300 billion. So it's urgent that we amend the debt ceiling. We are proposing that the debt ceiling be $500 billion because under Labor's own forecast, it was going to peak at $370 billion and we've been advised by the Treasury that we need 40 to $60 billion of buffer so that we can do things like refinancing. And that right. means well, you've we got need a at least $430 billion, billion. You've got an extension to $400 billion sitting in the Senate now. Labor says, why not accept that and, and perhaps stop any uncertainty? Because, Helen, it simply um, is not enough on the, on the Labor Party's own figures that they left for us to deal with. As I said, their forecast is for a peak of $370 billion and the Treasury advice, which was given to Wayne Swan as much as to us, suggests that we need to have at least a $40 to $60 billion buffer. Um, now that takes us to in the vicinity of $430 billion. So we are asking for a $500 billion limit so that we never have to come back to the Parliament and ask for an increase in the debt limit ever again. Right. We're asking the Labor Party, let us fix the mess that you gave to us. Let us fix that mess so that we can put Australia back onto a financially stable position. All right. Unfortunately, Alan Tudge, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Helen.